Hello there, guys. Welcome back to Eunice Talks Football. Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today. Double whammy today. You're getting a double upload. So this is video number two of two. I gave you my preview of, on my own um, for the Chelsea Palace game taking place tomorrow. You'll find that up right here if you haven't caught it already. So make sure you do check it out after this if you haven't seen it. But for video number two of the day, I thought none other than bringing on a good guest, Goonie, man knows football. How you doing? Welcome onto the channel for, I think, is it the second time <laughs> <laughs> or something like that? You're on mute, bruv. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, let me get off there mute. It might it might be the third or second time, I think. It is, I don't isn't know. it? I don't know, yeah. but it's been, it's been a minute, but it's always good to be here. Happy to be on. Thank you for having me back, bro. No problem, man. No problem. Obviously, for those that are familiar, you normally catch us both over on Lee Gunner's channel. For others that are familiar with your work, obviously, your channel, Man Knows Football, also appearing on Troops back again. Um, and yeah, and if you don't know, make sure you catch all of those different platforms out. But check out Man Knows Football. His link is in the title. So make sure you have a look. Subscribe to him. An alternative Chelsea voice in a in an arena of mayhem, especially with all the Arsenal lot. I know on like Troops' channel, for example, it's nice to have a Chelsea voice of reason on there who's able to just clarify the situation with everybody you know it's mad yeah yeah it's 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 fun being on there obviously the whole bands and that but arsenal in the mud they just lost one nil to southampton so this ep next episode should be interesting for half and we've got to give therapy to lee gunner and Northside tomorrow that happens every tuesday so if you do want to catch that make sure you check out lee gunner's channel and we will be there to provide the uh the therapy as we normally do um, yeah, I mean, yeah, before we get into the Chelsea uh, Crystal Palace game and, and all of that, I mean, what an unreal day of football. We've had Tottenham bottle it against Brighton, so yep. Brighton have officially taken over North London. Right? <laughs> yeah, they've done a um, double over both teams, isn't it? Yeah, Arsenal Tottenham now evicted yeah. from North London. That's called Brighton now. Um, and then you had United almost, they were 2 0 up against Norwich, then it went to 2 2. Uh, because their left back didn't know how to do anything, and then all of a sudden Ronaldo pulls off a hat trick. So fair play there. But Arsenal, on top of that, losing to Southampton 1 0. Um, no one wants top four. And Manchester City are out of the FA Cup now because Pep decided to do something stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, 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 but he, I don't know why does he do this in the games against like the one teams where you don't want to be tinkering with your lineup, man. If the boy is on the bench, you start him. There was a whole doubt as to whether De Bruyne was actually going to be fit, but now he's on the bench. He is. He's ready to play. Play him, you know. Um, baffling. Poor Fernandinho on his own. Um, that midfield got exposed by Liverpool in that first half, and Klopp doing what he does best tactically. I thought he was superb. Um, Liverpool were outstanding. Obviously, second half City managed to come back into the game a little bit, but yeah, Stefan was another blunder. You normally oh, go to your top goalkeeper, and he plays Stefan. Oh, did you see that mistake as well? He tried to be Edison. Absolute <laughs> how, absolute how and this is what I don't find fair, yeah. Um, is that Pep will probably sell him off the back of that. You know exactly what Pep Guardiola is like. Don't be surprised if he never puts on the Man City shirt again. But then you started him in the semi-final and he's played how many games prior to this? I think he's played to be fair, I think he has been their goalkeeper for the FA Cup, actually. Before I say that, this is the problem. You know, it gets to this whole thing of, oh, we've got to play the cup goalkeeper. Nah, I don't understand me. that logic. Not for me, not for me, not for me. I said the same about Kepa. So, like, yo, listen, I don't care if he's been playing all the way up to the final. Mendy starts the final in a final or semi-final. Yeah, when you depend on what team you play against, you play your best eleven. End of. Exactly. There's no room for sentiment. A hundred percent. I fully agree. I fully agree. And that's cost them because that blunder, that mistake that he done. I don't know what he was trying to do. I know it looked like he was waiting for a bus. That's how long it took for, for Mane to rock up and snatch it I mean, him. I mean, because I was looking at the body language and wondering how did this happen? And then when you actually look at him, when he receives the ball, his eyes are on the ball the entire time. And I'm talking for like three, four, five seconds. He's got, he's absolutely oblivious. He's got no peripheral vision. He's got nothing. He can't see anything around him. So yeah. I wasn't even surprised when Mane caught him because even he, he was surprised. At least at the, at the very least, try and move but the fact that he was just caught oblivious was was concerning and it's should, like he was frozen there? yeah it's like should he really be there in the first place if your awareness in that situation in possession of the ball right you're not even taking a goal kick you're that lackadaisical in the semi-final horrible decision to start him 
Terrible. I mean, you look at Liverpool. Did they start? Um, you know, did they start any of their old their, their other goalkeepers? No, they no, went with Allison. No, Klopp no, knows it's no. a serious game. You're not playing Stoke. Playing, <laughs> playing Liverpool, yeah. uh, and Liverpool might act well. Liverpool right now on course to doing the quadruple. It's never been done, and City could end up trophyless. That's mad. It, it is. It is. Would I be surprised? No, because I've said from the beginning of the season, I think Liverpool are the better team. I have. I have said it. I've said right, so. I'm not. I'm. I'm not surprised in the slightest. I reckon Liverpool picked them to the prem. Um, obviously they've just knocked them out to the FA Cup. I still think we beat them in the final, though, if we get to the final. Well, this is a, this a beautiful segue into into Crystal Palace because um, obviously we all expect to beat Palace. I've even seen a couple of posts from some Chelsea pages online now saying, "Oh, the FA Cup final is Liverpool if Chelsea beat Crystal Palace." And I'm like, okay, you can't really, you know. Crystal Palace, got to give them a little bit of respect. They mm-hmm. do have a top team. They're coming in with a good manager and they're coming in with nothing to lose. Um, are you concerned with the fact that they're coming in with that sort of mindset or are you uh, absolutely, ultra confident? Absolutely. absolutely. We saw against Real Madrid, a team with nothing to lose, how dangerous they could be. Once they get a sniff of that bone, they're going to go for it. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing left to go for. And for that reason, I think Crystal Palace are not just going to sit back at Wembley. They didn't do all that hard work to get to a semi-final, which they may... Let's have it right, and I say this respectfully, which may they may never reach again anytime soon. They're going to go for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and obviously Vieira, his first season at Crystal Palace to get to an FA Cup semi-final, a massive, massive achievement for, for himself personally and for Crystal Palace as well. Good a good group of youngsters. Obviously, one of them we know very well, Conor Gallagher is not going to be involved. But I just feel we're gonna we have to respect Palace. We have to respect Palace. We did go through a grueling 120 minutes against Real Madrid as well. So we, it remains to be seen how the boys are gonna respond to that because that's a lot of football to be played. High stakes mentally as well. Should it was very, very taxing on them. Um, but the respect for Palace is there. Quite a few danger men in that team. I know there's question marks over a couple of them. Some of them are 50-50 for the games. But, you know, you've got a man like Elise, very, very tricky on the ball. Um, Zaha, we all know about as well. Uh, Tyreek Mitchell, who looks, you know, he's he's coming up again. Another youngster who looks very, very good. Um, among several others, Gwehi as well. Somebody who we know who's been very, very defensively solid. So Crystal Palace, absolutely no marks whatsoever. And um, yeah, there are there are some personalities in that team that you have to be cautious about. Um, but with us, you know, taking that game in mind against Real Madrid, would you put out a similar sort of team if it was up to you, or would you change anything up? Much like uh, where season? where I wouldn't tinker too much with is the front three. Um, I would definitely keep um, Kai Havertz as the false nine or, or, or striker. Some people don't even like to call him a false nine. Is what it is. I call him a false nine. It, so, yeah, whatever you want to call it, that's where he's playing. Um, he's up front. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He's up front. He's in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Um, Timo Werner, I mean, last two games um, have been, you know, especially last game was a big game. Uh, pulled out a very good performance there. Um, took his goal very, very well. Um, thought he was a constant threat against Real Madrid. And one thing I do want to take into account as well, um, I mentioned it in our preview, was that Wembley is quite a big field. So naturally there will be space. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to take advantage of some of that space in behind Crystal Palace. And we've seen how lethal Timo Werner can be exploiting that. Um, So I think he stays in there. Um, Who played on the other side? It was Mason Mount as well. I think Mason Mount stays in that. No, he played in behind, didn't he? He played him behind. Yeah, he did play him behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Mace forgot for behind, a second. Yeah. I forgot for a second. It was the two up top and uh, Mace behind. I mean, even if it's not Mace behind, although I'd like to see him play, I wouldn't mind Ziyech playing out wide or even Mace playing out wide either. Um, aside from that, I might make changes elsewhere just down to, you know, resting players and just in the interest of rotating, um, keeping legs fresh because we do have a game against Arsenal as well that I'd like us to win. I mean, well, because it seems like no one wants top four, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, <laughs> we've got third nailed down, I think. That's pretty much done and dusted, unless if something crazy happens. But yeah, we've got to play Arsenal next weekend. Um, is it next weekend? No, it's weekend? on the Wednesday, I believe. On the I Wednesday? On the Wednesday, yeah. So, bearing that in mind, okay, um, if you want to prioritise, because the FA Cup right now is our last chance of some silverware. Um would you, which positions are there in that team that you look at in terms of the Real Madrid game to this and you go, I might have to change? Personally, I'd rest in Golo Kante. 
I'd say would you? Out. Yeah, I would. And I'm. I, I, it's not because of the frequency of how much he lost the ball. I just think he needs to just sit out and 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 rest. You know. Um. Look. I don't want to put it fully down to this. The, the fasting doesn't help any Muslim player, not just in Golo Kante, but I just feel even the run-up before then, Kante hasn't really had enough of a break. Um, I think Kovacic is good enough to do a job in that midfield. He has been our best midfielder um, in this Chelsea team this season for me. Um, Jorginho alongside him then? It could be Jorginho alongside him, but it, it depends what Thomas Tuchel is going to do. Is he going to pick him or Ruben Loftus-Cheek? That's the thing. We, we don't know. But if Jorginho is going to play alongside him, here's my concern. is We saw the way Crystal Palace absolutely pressed out Arsenal, pressed them out of the game completely. Thomas Partey had a horrible, horrible time. And my concern with Jorginho as to why is, yes, I understand that he can be smart with the ball and he can move it quickly. But it's when he doesn't and he gets isolated and he gets caught in that possession. You see what I mean? It can become a problem. It can become a focal point where Vieira is going to look at him and say, listen, we pressure him, get the turnover and we hit him up high in the field and it could be problems. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, Jorginho, I don't know. That's the thing. It could go It could go either way. It could go either way. Um, Loftus-Cheek, I can see why he would start him. Jorginho, I can also see why he'd start him. So there, it will be interesting to see who he chooses. I couldn't tell you for this game. Who would go for. Yeah, he's got, he's got to make a right choice here. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of anywhere else, anywhere else you would change? I might bring... Or would you play a back three and or a back four? That's also a... Or would you... Hang on. In terms of the whole back three, back four thing, because the Real Madrid game, we understand, and I'm, I'm guessing you, you're the same. It was a hybrid. Yes, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It wasn't a straight up just back four or a straight up just back three. It was and that's, a and that's hybrid. The, that's, and that's the conundrum we're having right now with that un, that other position in the midfield. If Loftus Cheek is going to play there, then don't be surprised to see on paper the back four because you know how he can drop out wide and do the quote unquote right wing back role yeah. and invert himself in. He's been doing that over the past couple of games, so this is why we don't know. Like too cool is that guy? He would just switch it up. Do you know what I mean? So, if um, in terms of the base, like just in itself, would you go with three central defenders or would you go with two and then a right centre back who you know might transform into the right back? It's. Bruv. <laughs> See, this is why Tuchel gets paid loads of money. Exactly. <laughs> because here's, here's my thing, yeah. Yes, Loftus Cheek has done well in that sort of role, right? But. I'm, my concern is with players like, you know, your Zahas who draw a lot of fouls and who like to hold the ball, you know, and your yeah. your, your, your Eze's and so and, and your Elise's and so on and so forth. Do you know what I mean? These are very, very skillful players who are going to be looking for fouls in and around the box. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, as, as much as I do, like, I, I have been relatively impressed with Loftus-Cheek. But I just feel like just that defensive minded experience is needed a lot more. Um, which is why I would opt for the back three for safety. Do you know what I mean? Because I would yeah. go, personally, Rudiger starts for me. Yep. I think bringing back Chalabar into the lineup would be good to at least... I don't know. This is the thing is, resting Thiago Silva makes sense, but it doesn't because his quality is just... It's so difficult it's to leave out. It's a cup semi-final, isn't it? But then, yeah, then, then he's 37. Because remember, he played... He wasn't subbed off for the Real Madrid game, was he? No, no, no. So that's 120 minutes we've just asked him to play. So there's that. I don't. So we it's either him or Christensen that sits this out. For me, naturally, because of the age, I would have to put Christensen in there and trust Chalabar. So Christensen would move in as the central centre back, and then you'd have Rudiger and uh, and 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 Chali on the other side. And then Reese James, right wing back. Uh, you'd have to. You'd yeah. absolutely have to. Yeah. The defensive display he put in against Vinicius against the Burnham Bow is a no-brainer. Yeah. Because you've got to think, because you see, it's an exceptional circumstance as well. Because remember, he was booked very, very early into that leg. Yep, he was. And he passed his baptism of fire because, from, as I mentioned it in the previous, I think it was with Matisse, I said, you know, I like to see defenders playing on a yellow card on the, on, on, on the tightrope to see just how well they can do it because it's another dimension to their game. It's very, very difficult to do that, especially at high stakes. And he did that absolutely unfazed. 
So I've got to have him in this game. To me, to me, to me, Reese James honestly is 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 top three at the club, one of our best players. And I think Easy. you have to start him for as as often as you can, but obviously be mindful of his injury record recently, and hopefully that doesn't turn out to something to be something habitual, you know. No, completely. Um, I completely agree. I, I personally would go to a back three as well. I think um your point about Loftus Cheek and how he would be targeted, I would say, against Palace when you're looking at players like Onoleze or Eneze or, you know, drawing fouls. you got to remember, and people that are saying, just play the same way that we did against Madrid. That was Loftus-Cheek's role against Real Madrid. Yeah. Trying to advance forward and draw those fouls and be a nuisance because of the way he can burst. I feel like against Palace, that's going to be turned on to him. <laughs> and you're mm -hmm. right. And I would say that's not the right situation to have him in, um, especially with the fact that Against Madrid, you could see that his positioning was phenomenal. Yeah. But on the ball, sometimes he would lose it or he'd take about a week and a half to make a decision. And right. It's, you know, you can't do that against players around you who are going to be, I'd say, super quick, brave, nothing to lose, and will cause, will cause you a nuisance. So I would definitely go back to a back three in order to try and nullify them. Um, I've mentioned it in my uh, first preview earlier on as well. Uh, the back three, Reese James, left wing back. Who are you going with? Uh, Marcus Alonso. Okay, all right, yeah, because he put in a clinic against Real Madrid, didn't he? <laughs> that you, was fantastic. You, you have to. I mean, listen in in the ideal world with the ideal team that we have, Marcus Alonso respectfully is 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 over at Inter or Syria or something. And I say that respectfully. Like that. Do you know what I mean? Um he's not someone you should be leaning on, but that's the most natural player we have in that position. And you know, let, let, let's reward him for the performance that he put in at the Bernabeu and hopefully he can continue that until the end of the season. Because if he does, listen, we it's it's a win-win situation. A win -win. It's a very good situation that we're in. So Completely. We'll see what happens with the whole um, ownership situation going forward. Summer plans, transfer windows, because yeah, there's good. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of transforming that needs to happen in this Chelsea team. Yeah. But um, with this with this team that you've outlined, okay, um, going into Palace, what's your prediction? How do you see it ending? Well, I've, I'm going to say this. Right now, I'm on a massive high from what I've seen over the past two games in terms of, of potency. I think that we've shown that we're able to now step it up to the next level. And the following season with one or two, hopefully two court is trusted, we can be competing on all fronts. So based off the form that I've, as that I've seen over the past two games, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 3-0 Chelsea. I'm going to be very optimistic as well with Chelsea because, as well, I feel that the exclusion of Conor Gallagher is going to be a massive, massive game changer for Vieira yeah. because, in terms of leading that press and you know doing the press in the opposition's um, third, um, Gallagher is he's immense at doing it. He's the one that leads it. He initiates it naturally. He knows when to do it, and the players trust him. So without him, it could be very, very different. And then the work off the ball as well, you know, I mean, that is work off the ball, but the work off the ball, all of that, it changes without him in the, in the lineup. I'm going to really struggle to see how they're going to keep up that intensity. And I feel that's what really got them here to this semi-final. So it's going to be a massive loss for Palace. It could be the game changer for them. Um, yeah. And to be honest, yeah, I do think without Gallagher, they're missing a big, big piece to their puzzle big piece of their puzzle not to say they can't do it without without him because i think they've got quality all over and i think vieira's got them set up really really well um but gallagher's been phenomenal um and i think you know what because tukul mentioned about meeting him in a restaurant and telling him he can't play and that's the rule and he can't change it um going into next season do you see gallagher walking right in Nobody, nobody at Chelsea Football Club should be walking into the lineup, and unless you're a very, very special talent like a Thiago Silva, a Lionel Messi, and those kind of names up there. Good yes, answer, yes, yeah. I just, yes, I just did that. I, I, I put Thiago Silva and Messi in the same sentence. I didn't. <laughs> I, I tell the people I didn't. I didn't plan on it. I didn't plan on it, but it does have a ring to it. it doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but un, unless you're of a, a, a talent that cannot be ignored, then nobody deserves to walk in I believe for every game you should be fighting for your position so Connor as good as he's been that's been good for Crystal Palace because when he puts on that Chelsea shirt it's going to be well what have you done for me lately 
and that's the way it should be. <laughs> well, that's the way it should be. If you want your standards to stay high, everybody should be playing to and training to the highest standards. So what have you done for me lately is a very valid question. <laughs> that question every time i hear that i think oh uh, um what who was it? was it eddie murphy <laughs> yeah in, in in coming to america i think it was uh janet jackson's song though what have yeah you it was. oh no it was the stand-up <laughs> no it was the stand-up stand it, yeah. stand it was delirious or raw one of yeah. them delirious i think yeah man um no you're right you're spot on look the standards need to remain high this is the thing going into this whole ownership change that we have going on at the club we want to make sure those standards don't slip yeah, and it's still about the the momentum that we have on the pitch and about the team and the way that we're building, using Tuchel to try and build around his image and what he wants. Um, yeah, definitely, we'll see what happens with with Connor. I've got a good feeling about Connor. I'm not gonna lie. I think he's gonna come in and really impose himself because his his traits and his attributes, I think, are gonna help us a it's, lot. It's an it's an asset to any team. It's a huge yeah. asset to any team to have that. And the fact that he's homegrown and, you know, understands the philosophy of Chelsea and doesn't have to take that um, adaptation period, hopefully, hopefully will work to his advantage. I mean, if it does, if he still has to come back, familiarise himself, maybe one or two players that he hasn't worked with before have stepped into the club, I, then I'm going to understand because we also have to remember he's still a very, very young player, which is the exciting thing. There's years ahead of him. He's now coming into a team that is, you know used to being in and around winning every single major competition. It's a huge step up for him, but it's one that I think he can definitely take, you know, to come into the Premier League team like Crystal Palace and do what he's done in a league as difficult as this, as physical as this, as fast as this, the intensity, all of that stuff, and still be their top boy. It shows like mentally up there, he's he's got it. And hopefully it can continue on for us for the rest of his career. But I think he's got a good future at our club, 100%. Yeah, big time, big time. The fact he's done it at that level now, he's progressed really well. And now he's at a level where the only way, the only next step is the highest level of the Premier League. And that's yeah. Chelsea. And, and so, I, I feel at this age, as long as the message with him is to compete, to compete and never lie and never rest on reputation. Reputation is a dangerous thing because yeah. arguably some of the signings that are still here are based on reputation and what they have done. And we should have really come and replaced it with potential that that can do. Obviously, there's the risk, you know, with with not knowing how they're going to develop in the future. But for for what we from what we've seen with some of our loanies and some of even the players that we have sold from our youth academy going and doing well elsewhere, we've got to start giving chances. We've got to start trusting these players. Big time, big time. I fully agree. Um, and obviously, we'll see what happens in the lead up to the new season and the fact that the loan will be terminated. That will happen. And then Connor will come back and we'll see what goes down. Yeah. Um, my score prediction for tomorrow, I've already mentioned it. I'm going 2 0. I'm going to be humble. Uh, <laughs> some, <laughs> Palace fans, some Palace fans will be watching going, get out of here. You're not humble. Um, <laughs> but I'm going, I'm going 2 0. I do think it won't be a battering. I think there is a, 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 a tax, you know, with the, the game against Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. it's not easy to recover from that there might be a couple of sluggish legs but apart from that i think we should control we should dominate hopefully get a, get a win i'm going to nil um before we wrap up i want to ask you um a, a very i think a very very interesting prediction i've not asked anyone this so i thought you know what i'm going to start picking up opinions um give me who you think is going to win each competition now that we know who's in it and how it's all pretty much going to come down to the end um premier league Who's Liverpool. winning the league? Liverpool. Liverpool. Okay. Um, considering we make it through tomorrow, <laughs> FA Cup. Who's winning the FA Cup? Chelsea. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Champions League. Now we know um, Liverpool versus Villarreal, Man City versus Real Madrid. Who's winning the Champions League? Wait, Liverpool are not playing Villarreal, are they? Oh, they are. That's the semi final, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I... They've got the same luck we had and last year. This, and I said this. Do you know what? I, said, I actually said this on back again, bruv. Villarreal are a very, very, very tricky team, bro. Because you see, if they score first, good evening, you're in big trouble. You'll be lucky to get more than one goal there. But then again, it is Liverpool. It is yeah. Liverpool. Nine times out of ten, I'm saying Liverpool win the Champions League. But this Villarreal thing is a bit, it's a bit of a curveball, fam. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Liverpool, but not with chest. So you, if so, if Liverpool somehow don't make it to the final and Villarreal make it, you reckon Villarreal would do it? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't okay. put them as favourites. If Man City make that final, I wouldn't put them as favourites, but 
if I see Mr. Good Evening lifting that Champions League, <laughs> will I say I didn't see it? Would I? I was surprised. No, I wouldn't. I, I honestly that wouldn't. would be insane. That but would be though, mad because listen, we're forgetting that I know completely different competitions, but to win the Europa League, how many times requires a set of stones this that is not true. many managers have? You see what I mean? Now he's yeah. in a bigger competition. It's about time he's getting into into deep ends of this competition. Don't sleep on this guy. You see, the thing is with Emery is that he didn't succeed in the Premier League because there's no patience in the Premier League. None. And we're all guilty of that. Not just Arsenal fans. Yeah, that's true. We're all guilty yeah. of that. So, And yeah. he even came out and said himself, I will never go back to the Premier League because it's not enough patience and I need time for certain projects. But now that's that... Fair. Yeah, now that... And, and remember, Villarreal's ground is a bit of an enigma. Not many teams <laughs> go there and win. You, you see it. what I mean? So, yeah. like, these are the little factors that play in the back of my mind against Liverpool. So I don't know. I've got no idea. But if 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 Liverpool do make it out of that, they're winning the Champions League as well. They do the double for me. Well, treble, the treble. sorry. Well, it'd be, the, it'd, the, it'd the, be the a treble. Yeah, because <laughs> the FA Cup. But I mean, th this is one thing we have to watch out for because it's never been done before. But you know, if and I say we we are the ones that can spoil the party here, or Palace if they somehow beat us tomorrow. But Liverpool are on track for a quadruple, and they're yeah. close now. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll see what happens, but if they pull that off somehow, that would be insane. However, as I've said, Chelsea can spoil the party, we'll see what happens in Europe. But those are good predictions, I agree with them to be honest. Um, and I, I think on the same sort of track, I think Liverpool are the ones that are going to finish quite high here. But hopefully, Chelsea end the season with a piece of silverware and a statement to, yeah. to City and Liverpool that look, we well, are here. Well, 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 we finished with two pieces of silverware already, if we're being completely honest. Um, yeah. If you want to call this a bad season, a flop season for Chelsea, well, I'll be like, is a Super Cup and the first time Club World Cup a, a bad season? Cool. Then next season, I want to see you winning. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Next <laughs> season, next season, then we should be winning more. But you get me, I want that FA Cup, especially due to the nature of how we lost it last season. We did, you know, we lost it, let's face it, to the underdogs, Leicester. Well done to them. They played well, deserved to win a trophy. But I can't have that happening again. We've been there so many times and we've just we've just fell short with this FA Cup and we need to get it back. Absolutely. Third time lucky. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah, it's got to happen Fingers this crossed. time. But, um, Grooney, thank you for coming on, man. Much appreciated. Um, oh, thank you, man. Thank you for having me on, bro. It's a pleasure to be here, fam. Anytime, man. Anytime. Uh, make sure you guys check out his channel in the in the um, in the title. Um, uh, let people know, as you normally do with me, what you got coming up on your channel. Well, right now it is the road to 10k, and we are relentlessly trying to push for that. The other day we just crossed 7,000 subs, so we've still got another free to go. Would really appreciate the help. I know a lot of Chelsea fans watch this, so make sure you smash that subscribe button. Um, smash it, as people. Smash it. As for today, I don't think I'll be going live today. It's like I've said, my parents have just come here from, from England. First time I'm seeing them in around three, four years. So I've got to spend some time with them. But tomorrow, I'm going to be back with the watch along. And I did also promise um, my subscribers that I will be doing an interactive watch along. I mean, not interactive watch along, interactive live after the game where they can just call in and give their thoughts. So I'll be open for about an hour and a half, two hours so I can get as many people as I can in that time frame. But aside from that, that's it for me, man. Honestly. Quality. Quality, man. Yeah, obviously, everyone watching, make sure after the game as well, you're going over there and, um, you know, giving any opinions that you have on your mind. Go for it. Make sure you go over there and, and join the conversation. Make sure you subscribe to him. Much appreciated. If you're new over here and you haven't already, already uh, hit the sub uh, subscribe button here too. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. And um, yeah, Goonie, once again, thank you for coming on, man. Definitely have you on soon again. Um, and hopefully Chelsea get the win tomorrow. Fingers yeah, man. Crossed. Appreciate so, you. Up, up the Chelsea. Have a good one, people. In a bit. Take care and peace.